my grandparents were very working class. My Both my grandfathers were dockers, one on the docks of Liverpool and one in Seacombe over the water on the Wirral. And my, my parents, neither of my parents were involved in the law at all. And so really it was quite an unusual choice for me at that time. And my A-levels, unfortunately, were something of a disaster. Um, although I loved studying law, politics, English literature, there was lots of distractions at that time and I was unsettled. So I didn't get the grades and um, I thought that, as one does when you're 18 and things don't go to plan, that life was over. I came down to London and I uh, fortunately had been encouraged by my mother to undertake a secretarial course. Uh, and so she had, in effect, saved me uh, from obscurity at that point, and I began working in the city, started as a temp, and um, was lucky enough to get a break and found myself working as a, a trader in the uh, capital market section of an American investment bank and spent three years um, living by my wits in the city. And during that time, in fact, I was involved in the new issues, reading the legal documentation that underpinned all of those uh, transactions. So unwittingly, I began to tie the threads back to my interest in the law. So I did an access course at Birkbeck University um, to help me access and started to study a law degree eventually back in Liverpool, but always had an interest in uh, banking, finance, commercial matters, until uh, the interest of crime and um, the bar and the real grit and mill of life uh, took over when I saw that in action a little more uh, during my university years. I saw a poster. Uh, in the faculty and it, it was advertising the university's dining night and I came to London um, after making a call, went to a dinner um, where there was a short pre-dinner talk about how the inns can help support access to, to law and had a conversation with somebody that I didn't realise was a bencher at the time, someone who was sitting amongst the students um, and I, I had a general conversation about my my interest in what I was doing at university uh, and a particular judge and he said do you know who do you know who that judge is and of course I'd referred throughout to he 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 and he said he is in fact a she and she is sat on top table and it was Dame Elizabeth Butler Sloss so a short while later when the benches retired a tap on the shoulder came from one of the porters who um, asked me, so invited me to, to attend the, the smoking room. To much hilarity, I told him I didn't smoke, um, not, obviously not knowing the establishment and how those things worked. And he encouraged me, fortunately, to, to go with him, uh, where, where I met Elizabeth Butler Sloss, who um, had a long conversation with me, gave me a huge amount of time, some advice, um, and asked to see uh, the particular piece of work that I was working on, showed real interest. and. A few weeks later, invited me to marshal with her, where she told me about scholarship schemes, the mentoring schemes, the opportunities to be supported by the INS to access the law, and, and really, for me, um, set me on a whole new path. I started working in um, serious criminal work when I was actually very, very young. My pupil master then was a criminal practitioner and he was involved in these large, big, complex drug trials that went on for a long time. And I think growing up, my very diverse background, my dad was always driving us around in vans to construction sites. I was not intimidated by being surrounded by men or being, you know, having a cup of tea in, a, in, in, a, in an area um, with, with working class men on a building site. So being surrounded um, by um, men in a criminal trial where people may have found those scenarios really intimidating or going down to the cells where um, those sorts of conferences were being held. I, I didn't find that difficult and I was able to go down and talk and relate and take instructions from people. I was able to um, both gain their trust and confidence and actually do a job that was useful as a junior. But I've been drawn to um, representing um, or acting for women and fighting their, their corner. And I think I've contributed to people's lives who've been trafficked or who've probably had some of the most dreadful experiences. I think it can help to be a woman when you are in and dealing with those sorts of difficult cases. And when you are walking in the shoes of people that have um, 
sometimes done the most extraordinarily, terribly difficult things, um, or a jury person who's having to listen to that, I think we see with different eyes and we speak with different tongue just by really who we are. And so that's important because particularly I've represented some women in those scenarios and um, that has, I think, helped with presenting their case um, through their uh, eyes that have seen it in the same way that they have. I think over the last um, 20 or 30 years we've seen a real development in women's rights and the representation of women and the um, experiences of women through the criminal courts, particularly I can only speak really for the criminal courts. Um, we've seen um, laws in provocation being developed, we've seen um, certain cases um, to do with infanticide and, and the killing of children where women were accused of, of, um, of killing their children. I'm thinking of Sally Clark and, um, and several other cases of, of, of that kind where women uh, were prosecuted and their cases were reviewed and, and fought and, and overturned really by advances um, that were made with regards to protecting their rights and, and fighting their corner. I kept in touch with the Elizabeth Butler Sloss from time to time. She would pop up at various times in my career. So when I would attend a dinner, from she, she occasionally would be there. I became a part of the mentoring program at the inn so that I could continue to do what happened to me and support other people. We discovered that there was a high level of growing distress uh, amongst people at all levels of, of call, seniority and practice area. Lots of reasons for that, uh, but in short people worried, um, people felt um, anxious and um, the bar was not always a happy place and when people were in a bad place there was not always an obvious place to go for support. So the Wellbeing at the Bar portal was born and um, it, it's a fantastic resource for people to be aware of the risks, information to improve their resilience and most importantly signposting them when they're in crisis and it's a valuable tool that heads of chambers and clerks have contributed to um, and we are beginning to I hope change the culture uh, about mental health and performance and, and the challenges that this job can present.